Coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, the 2023 NFL Draft is officially in the books. We'll talk about the players that the Raiders drafted. We'll talk about the undrafted free agents that the Raiders assigned. Plus, what picks stood out to me the most? Your calls and texts will close out the show. It's all coming up on Monday's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast for May 1st, 2023. Just win. And welcome in Raider Nation to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts to get the latest edition of the show as soon as it drops. And we do thank you if you're checking us out on YouTube. We appreciate that. And if you're checking us out on YouTube, it's because my man Ari, who does a great job making sure we're up on YouTube each and every day. Uh, we thank him and appreciate him. And you can check him out on Twitter at Ari Produces. But uh, Raider Nation, wake up, wake up, wake up. It's the first of the month, the old hood holiday. Haven't been able to say that in a while uh actually forgot to say it a couple times when it passed by and or the first just happened to show up on the weekend so didn't get a chance to record a show on that day but hey it's starting off the week on a monday it's the first of the month and the raiders have some new players uh, in the mix as far as their draft class and undrafted free agents as uh, the draft is officially in the books Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all in Kansas City. Uh, I got back to Las Vegas on Saturday morning uh, just in time to check out the last few rounds of the draft and then go and meet with uh, Raiders GM Dave Ziegler following the whole draft as he kind of recapped the whole thing. So I uh, want to go over the draft class that the Raiders have and uh, kind of just talk briefly about the, the players that they selected. And then coming up in segment number two, going to really talk about uh, the ones that stood out to me the most and what kind of impact I think they'll have. And I'll say this, man, uh, before I even get into it, and this will probably be the last time that I really say this, I saw so many negative comments from people on Twitter or I hear so many negative people uh, comments from, from Raider fans. And ultimately, man, we don't know if this class is going to be a phenomenal class. We don't know if it was a great class. Uh, we don't know if it's a bad class, right? I mean, you have a good idea of some of these players, but uh, ultimately you have to wait and see how they develop into the NFL. But there's so many people that want to just complain and complain and complain and complain. And it just kind of drives me crazy that, you know, there's some there's some por uh, portion of Raider Nation, and not all, and it's not really a, a, a too large of a, a of a portion, but it's just some that just won't let it go, won't let it go. It's almost like it's almost like they rather see the team fail just so they can say that they're right. And again, it's not a huge portion of Raider Nation. It's just some that it's it's almost like obnoxious, right? I mean, it's just like, come on, give me a break, like. Just let it go. L-I-G it, man. Let it go, and let's see how it all shakes out. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited about the class. I'm excited about what they could potentially do, and I want to see how it all plays out, see what players are going to be uh, some real good players. Who's going to be the next Max Crosby? Who's going to be the next Henry Renfro? Who's going to be the next Khalil Mack? You know, are, are there guys like that in this class? Well, we'll find out sooner rather than later, but uh, now the draft is in the books. We at least know who the Raiders have selected. We'll go over real quickly. Round one, pick number seven. We talked about it on Friday's show. Uh, Tyree Wilson, defensive end out of Texas Tech. Uh, he had a first-round grade, according to Dane Brugler, from The Athletic. And, you know, I, I really respect Dane Brugler a lot. So uh, what I did is I went over all the draft picks that the Raiders uh, selected and went through the beast that Dane puts out every year and just kind of uh, put uh, just check to see where he had these players projected to go, right? So, uh, again, with Tyree Wilson, first-round pick, he had him uh, slotted in at number eight, and the Raiders took him at number seven. So uh, there you go. Uh, again, we talked about him uh, in great length already on Friday's show. I'm excited about the young man. Uh, obviously, his his uh, foot injury that he had the surgery on back in November. Obviously, that's got to be healed for him to be able to get out there on the field. But Dave Ziegler said they felt very comfortable with where he was medically. Uh, if they didn't, they wouldn't have selected him. So I'm excited about what he brings to the table, not only as a guy that'll be out there uh, instead of Chandler Jones, but a guy that'll be out there with Chandler Jones and with Max Crosby. I'm excited to see all three of those guys get out there at the same time. And last two seasons at Texas Tech, he's had seven total sacks and of course his 2022 season was cut short because of that foot injury then round two got cooking pick number 35 tight end Michael Mayer from Notre Dame that was a guy that a lot of people including myself and Dane Brugler from the athletic expected to go in the first round he drops to the second round he was a guy that Dave Ziegler and Josh McDaniels were actually thinking about trading up into the back end of round one to go get 
and they ultimately didn't because the price of doing business was too high and instead uh they stuck around they were supposed to pick at 38 they traded up to 35 and were able to get uh arguably the best tight end in this class so i'm excited about him uh, I think that Josh McDaniels now has his Gronkowski, and I don't want to, you know, say that he's going to be on the same level. Gronk is obviously a Hall of Famer, but, I mean, the dude could play. The dude is fantastic. 67 catches and 71 catches the last two seasons, 840 yards, 809 yards, and 7-9 and nine touchdowns, respectfully, the last two seasons at Notre Dame. And, again, he's a guy that you should be excited about. I know that this draft we were all talking about defense, 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 but that's a good that's a good pickup at the tight end position right there. Is he going to be Darren Waller where he's going to be dynamic like that? No, but, man, the dude's going to be consistently consistent. And uh, he's a really good blocker. He has great soft hands, and he's really a tough blocker. And he always – Actually, what he talked about when he got on the Zoom call right after he was selected was the fact that uh, he wants to run someone over and put their bury their face into the dirt. I mean, he just has that that mean streak, but then he has the soft hands as well. So excited about what Michael Mayer is going to bring to that Raiders offense. So now you're really starting to see that thing put together. Round three. Pick number 70 overall, defensive tackle Byron Young from Alabama. Uh, Dane Brugler from The Athletic had a third or a fourth round grade on him in the Beast. The Raiders ended up getting him in the third round. Uh, he's had, what, 48 tackles, uh, had 48 tackles and four sacks last season at Alabama. And this is a dude that really stuffs the run. He's a really strong run stuffer, and he's a guy that has a really good attitude. Now, I'll, I'll expand on that coming up in segment number two, but uh, he just said that whatever team he goes to, he was going to uh, you know, bring uh, a winning mentality. He's a winner, and he can help change a culture if he needs to. And I'm not saying that the Raiders have to completely change their culture of the of the locker room because I think that they have some really good guys in that locker room that already uh, have possessed those really good traits. But the more you have in the locker room, the better. And so I think that uh, I think Byron Young is going to bring some leadership as well uh, and be a big force as far as stopping the run. And he can get after the quarterback a little bit, but he's really, really good at stopping the run. Also in round three, pick number 100, wide receiver Trey Tucker from Cincinnati. Uh, and Dane Brugler had him as a fifth round grade. So the Raiders uh, got him in round three, uh, pick number 100 overall. He had 52 catches, 672 yards, and three touchdowns last season at Cincinnati. And he's a kick returner uh, who averages anywhere from like 20 to 25 yards a kick return. So uh, he's a guy that, you know, will probably play in the slot. Uh, he's a guy I'm really interested to see what happens with Hunter Renfro. Uh, there's my gut feeling tells me that he's going to get traded at some point. Uh, I'm not sure though, but, but it would make sense if, uh, if Trey Tucker, uh, well, for that, that selection, if Hunter Renfro gets, gets traded, then the, okay, that makes more sense for Trey Tucker. But right now the Raiders uh, wide receiver room is packed. So something's got to give, right? There's going to be obviously some guys not going to be there, but this dude, uh, at least he could provide some special team help as well. So uh, that was a pick that I, I won't say I scratched my head at all. I just know that the wide receiver room is very full. And of course, like I said, Dane Brugler had him as a fifth round pick and the Raiders took him at round three, number 100 overall. Round four, number 104, cornerback Ja'Korian Bennett, uh, Maryland. He a uh, third or fourth round grade, according to Dane Brugler. He had five interceptions and 27 pass breakups over the last two seasons. That's called ball production, right? That's something that I've been talking about so much. And that's something that if you look at uh, these guys that they selected, all these guys have some kind of production. It's not just like, oh, they're projected to be a good player. They're projected to do this. They've, they've shown that they can have production in the college level, and that's something, especially in the secondary, that you've got to have. So uh, he's probably a guy that will play the slot. So that's going to be interesting to see. Does Nate Hobbs get another crack at playing outside? You know, what do they do? I wish that the Raiders had, had addressed the quarterback position a little bit more in the draft and the actual guys that they selected. They obviously didn't. Uh, they only got one cornerback and one safety. I was hoping that they would address it a little bit more, but they didn't. They did pick up a corner or two in the uh, as undrafted free agent so far. But as far as, uh, you know, corners that they actually selected, only one in Ja'Korian Bennett, uh, kind of a shorter dude, but he, he's very athletic can jump out the gym, and he's got ball production. So I'm good with that. Then in round four, a very interesting pick, number 135, quarterback Aiden O'Connell out of Purdue. I'm not a big fan of the guy. I think he's going to be a, a probably a really good backup. But I just, I've seen a lot of people talk about they think he could be a franchise quarterback of the future. I'll, I'll kind of wait and see. Right? I didn't watch a whole lot of Purdue football. I'm not even going to try to gas you up and act like I did. Uh, but from what I saw, and I did see some, and I did see O'Connell a little bit. I mean, I was, I was familiar with him when the Raiders selected him. I just think he's going to be a backup in the NFL. We'll see. You know, again, a lot of people saying that he's, uh, he has that quick release like Tom Brady. And I'm like, man, I'm definitely not going to put those kind of <laughs> expectations on him. But uh, apparently a lot of people think that uh, Josh McDaniels is really going to like him in his system. So we'll see 
how it shakes out. He's not a mobile guy, that's for sure. He's going to stand there in the pocket and try to pick you apart in 2022. 320 completions, 3,490 yards, 22 touchdowns, and 13 interceptions at Purdue. Uh, a little bit of a gunslinger. Sometimes he throws the ball uh, and trusts his arm a little bit too much, right? It kind of has that, uh, like I said, that gunslinger mentality. Uh, that's something that he's going to have to learn how to do is protect the ball. But again, I expect him to be a glorified backup probably in the NFL. I don't really see too much more from him. But hey, I've been wrong before, so we'll see. Uh, round five. Pick number 170, safety Christopher Smith the second out of Georgia. Uh, he had a third or a fourth round grade, according to Dane Brugler. And you want to talk about ball production, six picks the last two seasons there at Georgia. Obviously, they went to win the national championship back-to-back -back years. Uh, I like that. I like the fact that you got guys from Georgia. You guys got guys from Notre Dame. You got guys from Alabama. You know, you got guys from places that expect to win. Right in Georgia, of course, just a you know two-time national champion. They got Zamir White last year from Georgia, so they're getting guys from programs that have a have a tradition in winning. And I think that Christopher Smith is going to be a pretty good player. I really do. I'm excited about him as a safety with the silver and black kind of could play uh, all over the field. But uh, six interceptions the last two seasons uh, for me, that's good. Round six, pick number 203, linebacker Amari Bernie out of Florida. Uh, he was an undrafted free agent, according to Dane Brugler. He didn't think that he was going to get selected, and the Raiders took him in round six. But he has had production, four sacks and two interceptions, two forced fumbles in 2022. He was a guy that was uh, similar to Divine Diablo, where he was a safety, and then he's uh, converted to a linebacker. So last season was his first year as a linebacker there at, uh, at Florida and came away with four sacks, two interceptions, two forced fumbles. Uh, you know, he, he's, he's a pretty good little player, uh, and they got him in round six. And look, if he was supposed to be a preferred free agent or undrafted free agent and they get him in round six, fine. I know some people got mad because there was other linebackers out, out there available and they thought that they should have gone and grabbed them instead. But if they think that that's a guy that was going to fit in their system and it's round six, uh, I'm not going to get too upset about it. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, you reach for that one. Uh, you can call it a reach again. If he was going to go undrafted and they could have just signed him, well, then, you know, then it's a reach. But again, I'm not really worried about round six. I'm not really worried about round seven either. In round seven at pick 231, defensive tackle Nesta Jade uh, out of Arizona State. And, uh, and uh, Dane Brugler had him as a sixth or a seventh round pick. He had 20 tackles, uh, four and a half tackles for loss, and one and a half sacks in 2022. Uh, he's a guy that actually went to Miami at first, and then he transferred to Arizona State. And of course, uh, uh, Pierce Antonio Pierce is a is a linebacker coach there with the the Raiders, so he has familiarity with uh, Nesta Jade. So uh, there's you know that's probably why they ended up selecting him in round seven. It was probably a suggestion by Antonio Pierce, and so uh, we'll see we'll see what he you know I, I think that he's going to be a guy that's going to probably struggle to make the roster. Uh, my my buddy uh, that actually covers uh, Miami football sent me a text as soon as the, the Raiders selected him and he said oh yeah good luck with that guy man <laughs> he gets a lot of personal fouls uh, he's just very undisciplined so I thought well that's probably not going to go over very well with the coaching staff but again we'll see so uh, I do think that he'll probably struggle to make the roster but those are the guys that the Raiders selected uh, ended up getting nine picks with the 12 draft picks that they had uh, they like I said it wasn't going to make 12 selections uh, six on defense three on offense I'm good with that you know, is it is it going to cure all woes for the defense? No, but it's a good start getting six guys on defense. Obviously, there was, uh, you know, some priorities looked at as, as far as defensive side of the ball. They knew that they had to address it and that they absolutely did. Uh, also, real quick, and then we'll wrap up segment. Or, yeah, segment number one and get into segment number two. Undrafted free agents that the Raiders signed following the draft. Dalton Wagner, offensive tackle, Arkansas. McClendon Curtis, offensive lineman, Chattanooga. Drake Thomas, linebacker out of NC State. Adam Plant Jr., edge out of UNLV. Brock Martin, edge out of Oklahoma State. George Tarlis, edge out of Boise State. Jaden Grant, safety out of Oregon State. John Samuel Shanker, uh, tight end, Auburn. Jordan Perryman, cornerback, Washington. And Azizi Hearn, cornerback, UCLA. So 10 guys so far. And look, that, could, that list could change quick, fast, and hurry. It could change already, right? I mean, they're going to go through and they're going to sign guys. They're going to release guys uh, well before camp happens. So some of those guys that signed as undrafted free agents won't even get to, to practice, right? Because they'll somebody else will become available and they'll decide to make a move. So uh, those are the, the guys that were selected and the undrafted free agents that the Raiders signed following the draft. Coming up in segment number two, want to give you my overall thoughts on the draft and what pick stood out to me the most that I really like that I think could be impact players for the Raiders? We'll do that in segment number two after 
I tell you about Built Bar. And Built Bar, I tell you about all the time. You just go check out the website. I'm looking at it right now, built.com. And they've got everything in all kind of different flavors for you. I mean, right now, how about cookie dough chunk puff? That one is back. Uh, made with 100% real chocolate, 15 grams of protein, 160 calories, 8 grams of sugar. You can get that one. Or you can go ahead and get um, what other flavors? The peanut butter puff. How about that one? Coconut brownie strip bar. Peanut butter brownie balls, cookie dough strip bar. I mean, they've got snickerdoodle chunk puff. How about that one? They've got some kind of flavor for everyone. If you like marshmallows, you like the puffs. If you just want a, a regular chocolate bar, then you want the OG bars, like I like to call them. Strip bars, they have different, you know, different ingredients in them. It's just a lot of really good stuff. And again, the built balls, the peanut butter brownie built balls. I mean, those, those are incredible. You just want to have those snacks with you at all time and you want them to be good you know taste good as well but they're good for you and that's the key to it that they're good for you so check out the website today I tell you all the time built.com use that promo code locked on 15 you'll save 15 percent off your order when you go to check out again built.com promo code locked on 15 all right raider nation here we go segment number two of today's locked on raiders podcast went a little long there in segment number one i was, I was going over all the players that the raiders selected and uh, also the undrafted free agents so we'll make this segment a little bit shorter but i did want to just kind of give uh, my favorite picks out of the draft and especially the impact players we've been talking about uh impact players and the raiders need to go get these guys and you know they need to get three or four starters and honestly raider nation as i look at, at the picks that they made I see five starters. Now, I don't see five immediate starters, like day one starters. I see probably three day one starters, and I see two guys that could potentially be starters, or I do believe will be starters before the season gets wrapped up. Tyree Wilson, he's going to be a starter, right? Obviously, it's the first the round one pick, uh, you know, number seven overall. As long as he's healthy, he'll be out there. Now, he's got to go out there and earn it in training camp, but I do believe he'll do that. I think he'll be a key cog along that Raiders defensive line. Obviously, Michael Mayer, Notre Dame, second round pick, number 35 overall. He's going to be a starter immediately, right? And you're looking at that offense. I mean, man, you got Devontae Adams. Uh, you got Michael Mayer now. Uh, Josh Jacobs, I do believe, will be back into the mix. You know, you got wide receivers that you feel good about, Jacoby Myers. Uh, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot to like about the Raiders' offense, and I think Michael Mayer is really going to help open things up. And then the other guy that I think is going to be a starter immediately is the round three pick number uh, the big defensive tackle number 70 overall uh, pick Brian uh, Byron Young out of Alabama. I just think with his run stop stepping ability. Now, of course, he's only going to be, uh, you know, on the field for two downs, uh, you know, because he doesn't he, he, he's not going to be a three down guy. But still, uh, I just think that he's going to get out there and get a lot of burn early. So those are kind of the three guys that I'm looking at. And I'm really excited about Byron Young. I really am. Uh, I know there's a uh, there's uh, other guys that that you know some people were looking at and said yeah you know what I would have preferred this guy I'm not a big fan of this pick but I think Byron Young's going to be good I, I really do and of course uh, anyone who's been listening to me for a long time knows that I like Alabama players but this guy just there's something about him right even when we talk to him on the Zoom afterwards it's just again his leadership just to me it, it just really stands out and and this dude is a guy who so prides himself in uh, stuffing the run I think he's going to be a younger uh, better Andrew Billings. For the Raiders I really do and I thought Andrew Billings did a good job for the silver and black last season I think Byron Young has an opportunity to be that guy but he's also versatile which is something that the Raiders are looking for they're looking for guys that could play uh, outside they could play inside along defensive line they always want that versatility and Dave Ziegler said that dude could play up and down the line of scrimmage right Tyree Wilson he's the guy that could play up and down the line of scrimmage so all three of those guys Tyree Wilson Michael Mayer and Byron Young are three guys that I think will be starters two guys that I think will be starting before the season's over cornerback Jacorian Bennett and maybe he's going to be started right away who knows but I do think he's going to end up playing in the slot uh, but he is a guy that could play outside again we're talking about versatility uh, he's done both at Maryland right and he had ball production so uh, that's something I'm excited about he's a little shorter right he's not a big guy but he still has plenty of uh, athleticism and he had plenty of ball production at Maryland so I think at some point he's going to take over at least uh, uh, you know one of the cornerback spots uh, either the outsides or he'll end up being a, you know a starter as far as the slot goes maybe Nate Hobbs goes back on to the outside and then Christopher Smith the second out of Georgia the round five pick number 170 overall uh, he's a guy that uh, again more ball production but he's a guy that I could see uh, playing back there in that that back end with Trayvon Merrick or you know maybe Trayvon I don't know Trayvon Merrick's gonna have to work his tail off uh, to keep his job 
because I, I just see the talent that they brought in, the Raiders brought in as far as uh, free agency goes. They brought in Marcus Epps from the Eagles, who was just really starting to come up and uh, had all those uh, snaps that he played, played the most snaps for the Eagles last year. Uh, I think he's going to obviously have a big role for the Raiders. Uh, Christopher Smith, I think, is going to at some point uh, be a be a starter. So uh, Trayvon Merrick's going to have to figure out uh, how to stay on the field. He's going to play a lot better than he did last year. So uh, watch out for Christopher Smith to to challenge him or or or, or challenge any of the the safeties. I just think you're going to see him on the field quite a bit. And I know Patrick Graham uh, has ran the you know three safety look as well. So uh, I think you're going to see him on the field a lot. But those are the five guys that really stand out to me as uh, guys to get excited about. Of course, the Raiders selected nine. Um, again, I mentioned that I'm not that big a fan of uh, the Aiden O'Connell. I just I just think he's kind of, he's okay, <laughs> right? Uh, Amari Bernie, the linebacker, I think he's going to be, you know, a guy that's going to have to learn his role and find, find out if he could fit, you know, Nesta Jade out of Arizona State. Uh, we'll see with him. Uh, but, you know, it's just okay. And then Trey Tucker, interested to see what happens with Trey Tucker and see if Hunter Renfro is on the team long term uh, or if he gets traded. I just kind of gut feeling tells me that he's going to get traded. Actually, I thought he was going to get traded on draft day and it never happened. So we'll see. Maybe he doesn't. There's been conversation about uh, him potentially being traded for a while now and he's still on the on the roster. So there's that. But my overall thoughts on the draft and, you know, obviously we got to wait to see exactly how it plays out. But I mean, every single time that the Raiders selected over the course of the three days, I felt very confident they were going to get a good player. And again, the jury's still out. We'll have to see how these these guys end up playing. But I just felt like that there was a good, um, you know, like there was a good process that they were going through to select their players, right? They had really uh, had some guys targeted that they really wanted. Uh, they, they were sticking to their values as far as not giving up too much draft capital to trade up. You know, they had plenty of conversations. I don't know if you've read the Peter King Monday morning quarterback. He actually was in the Vegas war room and he does a whole recap of it. And uh, he was getting, they were getting plenty of phone calls on uh, trades. They were making, uh, you know, calls to trade and, and also getting calls uh, to, you know, to, to trade out of that certain spot. And they were very disciplined. And so I just, I, I again, I, I mentioned it before the draft. I have a lot of confidence in what Dave Ziegler is doing, uh, talking to him, following the the, the draft and, and hearing what he had to say. It just, everything seemed very calculated. Everything seemed like it was very smart. Uh, they got players with a lot of production and also got players with a lot of upside as well, right? So it's not like they've reached their ceiling. That's the other thing. It's like they haven't, they haven't peaked yet, but they still have production. You can see that all these guys that they selected have room to grow, but you've still seen the production. So there was a method to the madness. It didn't feel like it was one of those drafts where it's just kind of like, all right, uh, they're going to just, just make a selection and, uh, you know, pick, pick a, pick, pick a guy and hope that it works out, you know, and, and I don't want to dog on the last staff because there was players that they selected that were good. Max Crosby, Hunter Renfro, Josh Jacobs, you know, just to name a few. Trayvon Mullen was good for a while until he got injured. And then all of a sudden he was banged up quite a bit. I mean, there's there's players that that the old staff got, but it just felt like there was no rhyme or reason to what they were doing. And this this staff, to me, it felt like there was a good rhyme and reason to what they were doing. And side note, if you haven't got a chance yet to listen to the green light I think it's the green light podcast with Chris long. Uh, Mike Mayock is on it. And I actually listened to it while I was at the airport waiting to, to board my flight on Saturday on my way back to Vegas. I was able to listen to the whole thing. It's about an hour long, but Mike Mayock really goes into some great details of, you know, what it was like being a GM, uh, the silver and black. He said, Clee Farrell was his pick. Uh, I talked about John Gruden, the coach and, you know, and talked about the dynamic between him and Gruden as far as who's who was making the calls on, on the, the players. And, you know, it was it was really good. If you get a chance, it's not that often that I go and encourage you to listen to another podcast, but that's a really good one. Kind of gives you a little bit of background on what was going on with the silver and black the three years that Mike Mayock was part of the team. Uh, I think that that's some good stuff to check out. So if you have some extra time, go ahead and check it out. I think it's called the Green Light Podcast. It's by Chris Long, who's obviously Howie Long's son. So it's it's a really it's really really good stuff if you have a chance to check it out. But overall, thought that the Raiders did really well, and for the most part, everyone that I've talked to, either professionals or or just fans in general, I think have the pretty good feeling that yeah, the Raiders did pretty well in this draft. Now we just got to wait and see what these players do on the field. But of course, that's up to the coaching staff and others to uh, to develop them and put them in the position. To succeed. Coming up in segment number three, your calls and texts. You're off that Locked On Raider Podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. That's coming up next here on the Locked On Raiders Podcast.
Here we go, Raider Nation. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Time to get to your calls and texts. Drop that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. Slots Ledoux from Sacramento, California, the 916. He's calling to talk about the draft and ask a question about the starters. Here he goes, Slots Ledoux from the Sacramento. Hey, Q. It's uh, Slots Ledoux out of the 916, Sacramento, California. Uh, I was wondering... Uh, Considering that we got Tyree Wilson in the first round and Michael Mayer in the second round, and that I keep hearing that to have a successful uh, draft, you need at least three starters. So Michael Mayer and Tyree Wilson seem to be slotted in as one and two of the starters that we got out of the draft. Who do you see as being the most likely to be the third starter? if this is going to be a successful draft, if you see any of them. Just curious your thoughts and everything. I appreciate your time. Have a good one. Thanks so much for the call, my man. I appreciate you. And as I said in segment number uh, two, man, I think the first three picks are all starters. And I think uh, Ja'Korian Bennett and Christopher Smith, the second, will be starters before the season ends. I, I really do. I just I have confidence in those. And those are all guys on the uh, – or, well – Three, four of the four of the five guys are all defense. Of course, Michael Mayer, the tight end, uh, that dude is just going to be a stud. I'm <laughs> I'm excited to see him added to the the mix and on offense. But uh, those defensive guys, I think that they're going to, you know, it's going to be obviously a learning curve. They're they're rookies in the NFL. It's not going to just click overnight. But I do think that those guys are going to uh, provide a nice little impact for the Raiders uh, pretty quick as soon as this season gets started. So thanks so much for that call. I do appreciate you. Next up, I got a text from Omar in El Paso. He says, hey, Q, it's Omar from El Paso. In my opinion, the highlight of this last weekend was Chandler getting restructured. I seem to be the only person who was underwhelmed by this draft. I do think some of these players will contribute to the future, but when we've been to the playoffs twice in two decades, it'd be nice to win now, next year, and for the future. Seems to be taking over a commitment to excellence and just win, baby. Chandler won't be a backup to Wilson simply because he's the most expensive backup in the league. We can't cut him since there's a ton of dead cap. Mayer was a nice pickup, might be the only starter. They traded Waller for a Trey Tucker instead of Ringo. Tight end number one for a wide receiver, number four, five, or six. Shaking my head. Chris Smith was my favorite pick. Bennett will be decent, but I don't think our defense got any better at all for the upcoming season. Carter is better than any of our defensive tackles, and Gonzalez is better than any of our cornerbacks, and Campbell Sanders are better than all of our linebackers. I know starters don't come on day three, but when all we... When all we talked about was defense for three months, it feels like a dud. Change my mind, please, as it's lonely on this island. Thanks, Q. That's Omar in El Paso. And Omar, obviously, you kind of know how I feel already by listening to the podcast. If you're already at the segment number three, you already know that I think the draft was pretty good. And as I mentioned, a lot of Raider Nation feels the draft was pretty good. Uh, I don't want to say you're on an island by yourself because I'm sure there's others that that don't feel that confident, but... Uh, I think that I think there's some really good players that the Raiders got. And I do think that Tyree Wilson is going to be a guy who's going to be out there uh, starting. And like I said, he doesn't have to just play be on the edge. He's a very versatile guy. That's the thing about it, man. Versatility, versatility, versatility. Uh, I, I like I like a lot of the players, man. I, I really do. My mayor is a no brainer, right? The tight the tight end from Notre Dame. No, no brainer. Byron Young. Again, I think he's going to be he's going to be special. Uh, I really do. I think he's going to be a special player uh, that's going to be really good at stopping the run. And, you know, that's the thing about it, man. I mean, you got to shore up all the defense. You want to shore up the the passing game. You want to get to the quarterback, but you also want to be able to stuff the run as, as well. And that's what Byron Young is going to be able to do. Uh, Bennett, he's got that uh, that the, the ball production that I mentioned, five interceptions, 27 pass breakups over the last two seasons. We'll see where he plays. He's got the versatility. That's the other thing. All these guys, for the most part, all have versatility as well and as you said uh you like christopher smith a lot i like that pick as well uh, another guy with plenty of ball production i think if you give it a chance man i think you'll understand you'll understand you'll see that this is a pretty stinking good draft class that the raiders got but again i mean i could tell you all you want to hear i could say it all day long but until you actually see it and put it together you know i understand with you uh having having questions so uh we'll see how it goes we'll see how it shakes out but uh like i said overall i thought the draft was pretty good Next up, got a call from Raider Nick out the 808. He's calling to talk about the state of Raider Nation and has a message that he'd like to pass along. Here he is, Raider Nick out the 808. What up, Q? It's your boy Raider Nick calling out the 808. Um, and I just got a quick, quick, uh, quick shout out to Raider Nation because uh, I've been seeing and hearing too much crying, literal crying, over Josh McDaniels as a head coach, over Derek Carr getting released. Uh, uh, toughen up, Raider Nation. What is wrong with you nowadays? Wah, I don't like the coach. Wah, I don't like that they brought former Patriots. Wah, 
wah, wah. Grow up, literally grown men and women over here crying because they don't like our coach. Who do they want? What do you want? Well, you want to fire the coach every year that they don't win the Super Bowl? You can't just blame Josh McDaniels. You can't just blame Derek Carr for what happened. It's the entire team. The entire team. Well, we don't have an offensive line. Then who blocked for the all for the rushing leader last season? Who blocked for him? Because Josh Jacob was running around on his own. It was that offensive line. Wow, wow, wow. Come on, Raider Nation. Toughen up. Toughen up. Thanks for the call, my man. I appreciate you. And, yeah, I mean, that's why I started off the podcast the way I did when I was saying that there's, you know, some fans that are just, they just want to be miserable. They just want to be uh, angry or upset about something. And at some point, man, you just got to get over it. Either you're going to support the team or you're not, right? And, look, I wasn't a fan of Jimmy G. Jimmy G got signed by the Raiders. I'm going to support the guy. Right, he's the Raiders quarterback. Josh McDaniels, I wasn't a big fan of Josh McDaniels getting the head coaching job, but he got the job. And then when I got to know him, I was like, oh, actually, what I thought about him isn't really who he is. He's actually a pretty good dude, <laughs> right? Now, of course, he's got to go get it done as far as the, you know, uh, on, on the field. He's got to go and, and win games because ultimately that's what he's going to be judged by. And right now he doesn't have a winning record, so that's on him. But, hey, you give him his players, you give him the guys that he wants, and see what happens, right? There's no excuses. It's all, okay, you got your guys. Now make it happen. So that's why I'm just kind of the way I am. I'm just, I'm in wait and see mode. Uh, I don't want to dog this staff until I can see that, hey, this staff is just not going to be able to get it done. But there's so many that just want the Raiders to be bad just so they can say that they are right. And that never, never makes sense to me. So thank you so much for that call. I do appreciate you. Next up, got a text from North Texas Raiders. Said, what up, Q? It's North Texas Raider. Just wanted to say I really like the sounds coming from Byron Young. If he could play, he sounds like he might be able to be more than a vocal leader on the field, and that's what's been lacking. Love what you do for the nation. Uh, North Texas Raider out, and I agree. Thank you for the text, by the way. I agree 100%. I think he's going to be a leader on the field, off the field, uh, and I, I know he can play. Right. And it, it's funny that uh, he said that he, he didn't have a whole lot of production as far as getting after the quarterback, because at Alabama, he had to earn the right to be able to get to the, the passer or, or, or rush the passer. Right. I mean, he just he had to, to do one thing really well, which he did, which is stop the run. Uh, and then finally, he started to get a little bit of opportunity to get to the quarterback. And he said that his production as far as four sacks uh, last season, that was a little bit of, you know, light bulb click clicking you know, click, clicking on and then also uh, getting the opportunity to get after the quarterback. So I think I think he's going to be good, man. I'm I'm pretty pumped up about that guy. I think you'll see a lot of him on the field, and I think you'll see a lot of him on the field early. So thank you so much for that text. I do appreciate you. One more uh, call as we wrap up the show. Nathan Glass, Steelers fan. He's calling to talk about the Raiders draft and wants to talk about one draft pick that stood out to him the most. Here he is, Nathan Glass from Steel, or He's a Steeler fan. Hey, Q. Nathan Glass, Steeler fan. Just want to congratulate you guys on a good draft. It looks very uh, prospering. I wanted to give you some shout outs on one pick you guys picked, man, that honestly, I love the kid. I love the kid. I love him coming out of college. I love him. I love him a lot. Um, your 135th pick, Aiden O'Connell. This kid, like, okay, just everything about him, man. I love that. I love that. That zip fastball he got, I love this. I love his just his presence. He's a he's a fighter. He's not a mobile guy. He's a pocket guy. Uh, Josh McDaniels gonna love him a lot. I know he already do. Um, I think he's gonna fit very well with you guys. Honestly, 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 I really do. Gunslinger written all over him. Um, just you guys are gonna like that pick, man. Of course, I know you guys like all your picks, but if I was to say. If I was to take one from other than Tyree Wilson, I would say it's Aiden O'Connell. So congratulations on that pick, and uh, good luck in the upcoming season, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for the call, my man. I appreciate you, and you probably saw more of O'Connell than I did. I, I wasn't a big fan of the selection. Um, then again, I prefer a guy who's going to be mobile, right? We've been talking about it for quite a while on the show that the Raiders need to finally get a quarterback that can have a little bit of wiggle and do something. And as you mentioned, O'Connell's not that guy. He doesn't have wiggle at all. Now, he might turn into something. Josh McDaniels, like you said, might end up really liking him, and he ends up being a, a really good quarterback. But uh, with that gunslinger mentality, the one thing he's going to have to do is learn how to protect the ball because he just can't do. Even this last season at Purdue, what did he have, 22, inter or 22 touchdowns and 13 interceptions? That's not, that's not going to cut it, right? He's going to have to protect the ball a lot better than that. But uh, I saw a lot of people excited about the pick. I just was kind of, hmm, 
so-so about it. I think he's going to be uh, a really good backup in the league, which is fine, right? I mean, I think that these teams, all teams, including the Raiders, are going to get in the business of basically drafting a quarterback, if not every year, every other year, right? And just to make sure that they go get their guy. So I expect the Raiders next year, with that being said, because I do think he's going to be a backup, I expect them to go dip back into the, the quarterback world and, and, and draft another one next year, depending on uh, where they're at and how many draft selections they have. But uh, I, I would not be surprised at all to see them go get a quarterback next year. And maybe they'll get their quarterback of the future next year. Or like you said, maybe this guy will turn into something that Josh McDaniels really, really likes. But thank you so much for that uh, that call. I do appreciate you. Coming up tomorrow, we get a text from Raider Wade. Uh, Logan in Pennsylvania hit us up. Uh, got some more calls to get to as well. Uh, we'll go do a little bit more deep dive on some of these players, how they can impact the, the team. Just kind of wanting to get a little bit of a, a reference of who they are. Uh, and, and especially the undrafted free agents as well. Uh, we'll start reaching out to some people and getting some guests on the show that can give us a little bit more insight on these players and break them down a little bit more uh, just to get you familiar with who these uh, who, who the Raiders have selected. So that's going to do it for today's show, Raider Nation. Uh, thanks so much again for making the show the first listen of the day. If you're checking us out on YouTube, it's because my man Ari, at Ari Produces on Twitter. We appreciate him, and we appreciate you. So until tomorrow, Raider Nation, take care of yourself, take care of your family, love on your family. Most importantly, as always, just win, baby.